Alrighty, this is Tom from AntiProton.com, and as you can hear, my five minute baseline analysis just ended. I'm reasonably confident of the outcome of this uh, test, so I didn't do a longer base count. If I were unclear as to the outcome of this, I would have done a tremendously longer count to make absolutely sure. Anyway, if you look and see, in five minutes I got 62 events while monitoring this little shot glass on top of this microwave with nothing running. So we divide, we divide by 10, that's 6.2, multiply by 2, that's 12.4. 12.4 counts per, per minute is the amount. 12.4. I'm going to write that down here in this box. 12.4, and that's a total of 62 in 5 minutes. It's important to always document everything that you do, because if you don't document it, then really there was nothing, there was no point in ever having done it in the first place. I'm going to take this uh, shot glass and fill it with water. And I've already, by the way, to let you know, I've already tested the water several times beforehand. And, and I know for a fact it doesn't have any particular radioactivity. But anyway, I will give the water a one minute count before I start just to make sure that I'm not getting anything above normal baseline. But then what I'm going to do is put the water in the microwave and nuke it for a couple of minutes. Or maybe it's a shot glass, so maybe 30 seconds because I don't want to blow the shot glass up. Then I'm going to put it out here. And I'm going to let you see how much, in a five minute count, radiation is in the glass. I believe, in fact, to tell you the honest truth, I'm 100% confident that there will be no increase of radiation because microwaves are not ionizing. They are non-ionizing radiation. They're just electromagnetic radiation. They will not cause secondary ionization. But somebody asked me a question on antiproton.com whether or not this was actually the case. And regardless of what a person thinks or doesn't think, there is never really any reason why it's unacceptable to test something. If nothing more, this will just prove what I already, uh, already believe. But then again, sometimes our, our most held truths of science need to be tested every now and then anyway. So regardless, um, I'm signing off until the test is done. As you can see, we're just about done with one minute, and there we go, one minute and I got 12 counts in one minute. So as you can see with this full glass of water, well it's a shot glass, we have approximately 12, which is what we thought our baseline was. I was reasonably confident that this was going to come out this way, but it's always worth a check anyhow. Alright, so we have 12.4 as an average, 12 for this shot glass, it's about average. I'm going to microwave it for a short time and we will see. Thought you might find it interesting to see that while the microwave is on, our counts per minute aren't really that increased. Which was to be expected. But regardless, we will see what the water does when we pull it out. You should find that it doesn't really go up very much. Alrighty, just a short time more. Alrighty, I've started my five minute base uh, my five minute analysis and as you can see the water I don't know if you can even see that or not, I guess you'll just have to take my word for it, is approximately one hundred and fifty hundred and sixty three degrees. Eh, the water's pretty hot. Well, temperature wise anyway. So we will see what we get. Alrighty, we should be getting pretty close to the end of our run here of five minutes. As you can see, we're at 65 currently, and beforehand we were at 62. That's still kind of a rounding error at this point. We'll divide this by amongst five minutes. The easiest way to divide the number by five is to divide it by 10, multiply it by two. It's just quick, e easy. There we go, 66. That's 6.6. .6 which is 12, 13.2. So 13.2 counts per minute as a result of this. And I'm going to document that in my little booklet here in just a minute because it's always important to document. Alright, so 66 is 4 counts per minute greater, no, excuse me, 4 counts totally over a space of 5 minutes 
greater than what we had before. Four counts falls within the plus and minus 10% uh, standard error of this apparatus. Thus, I can conclusively state that this microwave, at least this microwave, did not increase the radiation in this device by any significant amount whatsoever because microwaves are non-ionizing radiation. They don't irradiate things, they don't leave secondary ionization. Although it should be noted that even if I'd exposed this water to gamma rays, which are ionizing, it probably would have had the same result. Water doesn't tend to store radiation too much unless it has a contaminant in it already. But regardless, it's always worth a test. This is how proper science is done. You establish a baseline, then you run your analysis and you check your results. And if you don't like what you find, well, double check, quadruple check, but always remember that science is about what you find and discover, not about necessarily what you want to find or discover. So keep an open mind. Alright, this has been Tom from AntiProton.com. Have a great day!